King of the pond, that's the snapping turtle. They are often feared and detested and sometimes eaten, but snappers have a very important role in their ecosystem and deserve our respect. They are apex predators and help keep water bodies clean. There are two species living in the United States, the common snapping turtle and the alligator snapping turtle. We will talk about the differences in just a minute. Snapping turtles have distinguishing features that make them easily identifiable. They have larger heads and longer tails than other species of turtles. Both common and alligator snappers have distinctive ridges on their shells. Their skin is rough and bumpy, and the top of their mouth curls over into a sharp beak. Their nostrils are positioned on the very tip of the snout and make great snorkels. Snapping turtles do come up on land to lay eggs, move to another water source, and look for food. Coming sn Common snapping turtles are widespread east of the Mississippi River and into the Great Plains state states. There are populations on the West Coast in California and Washington that are not native to that region, but come from the illegal pet trade and people releasing them into the wild. Snapping turtles are omnivores, eating both plants and animals. Prey species include fish, frogs, reptiles, birds, and mammals, as well as many invertebrates. Alligator snappers tend to eat less vegetation than their common relatives and have been known to eat small alligators. Both species live in fresh and brackish water, often with soft bottoms and abundant vegetation. The common snapper may go from pond to pond looking for mates or food. Snapping turtles have a homing instinct that is not as strong as land turtles. You can check out my video on the turtle homing instinct, which I will link above. Will snapping turtles bite you while you're swimming? It is unlikely a snapping turtle will bite you while swimming. They are more likely to swim away when they sense your presence. I grew up swimming in farm ponds, and my daughter-in-law competes in triathlons in the lakes of Wisconsin. Neither of us has had any issues with turtles. However, snappers do prefer shallow water, so upon entering a freshwater pond or lake and accidentally tread on one, it may bite you if it feels threatened. If you are swimming, however, snapping turtles do not typically swim up to you or approach you. and are more likely to be spotted on roadways. On land, they are less mobile and are more likely to feel vulnerable. It is best to keep your distance and let them go about their business. Snapping turtles can sense the Earth's magnetic field, which guides them as they travel from one known food source to another. As we continue to learn more about snapping turtles, please boop that like button so YouTube shares this video with others. Females may travel a significant distance to lay their eggs. They look for sandy, loose soil they can dig down in. Funny story. When I was rehabbing in Kentucky one summer, I had a young man call me because he had found a clutch of eggs in a large compost pile on his farm. The female turtle thought she found a nice soft spot to lay her eggs. Good news, he decided to leave that section of compost unturned till they had hatched. Snapping turtles are sexually mature by six to eight years and have a shell length of about eight inches. The eggs are creamy white and shaped like a ping pong ball. The female lays 25 to 60 eggs in the nest and covers them back up to incubate in the worm soil. Then off she goes, never to see them again. Depending on the temperature, it takes between 9 and 18 weeks before they hatch. They are about the size of a quarter, about an inch long when they are born. 
they have an egg tooth like chicks to get out of their leathery shell. The eggs and babies fall prey to a huge number of different animal species. The nests are often raided and the eggs are devoured by the likes of fire ants, raccoons, skunks, badgers, crows, coyotes, and mink. Some of these species also prey on the hatchlings. In the water, baby turtles may be eaten by predatory fish, such as bass and pike, as well as snakes. Cranes, herons, and egrets also eat the babies. Adult snappers are usually too big for many of these predators, but alligators, black bears, and otters have been known to eat them. The sneaky otter ambushes them during the winter brumation period. Humans are probably the biggest predator of snapping turtles. Most states have a season where snapping turtles may be caught, trapped, and or hunted for meat or pleasure. Snapping turtle soup is their traditional food in the South. And just a note, that would be the common snapping turtle, as it is illegal to hunt the alligator snapping turtle. This is the alligator snapping turtle. They mainly live in southern states along the Mississippi River. Populations of the alligator snapping turtle are in decline and they are considered a vulnerable species. Habitat loss, climate change, and poaching are all reasons for this. The alligator snapper looks more prehistoric than the common snapper, with more pronounced ridges along its shell, a more beak-like mouth, and a more angular head. The alligator snapper is larger, typically between 20 and 70, 175 pounds, but the recorded weight is 249 pounds. That's the recorded high weight. The alligator snapping turtle also has a very unique feature. Inside its mouth is a pink worm-like appendage called a vermiform. It uses the vermiform as a lure to attract prey. It will sit at the bottom of a lake or river with its mouth open wide and fish will be attracted to the lure and can swim right into the turtle's mouth. It's the only turtle species in the world to use this technique of prey capture. They are less mobile than the common snapper and so this luring technique is an important method for feeding. You are likely to see common snapping turtles crossing roads, especially near lakes or ponds. Many fall victim to vehicles, but you can safely pick up and move a snapping turtle across the road. Approach the animal from behind. Gently but quickly, grab the turtle on the rear sides of its body with your thumbs on the upper shell and fingers underneath. Keep the head away from your face and body at all times. The turtle may be heavier than you think, so lift it carefully and keep it low to the ground in case you drop it. Move the turtle to a safe location in the direction it was going and gently place it on the ground. Step away slowly. Never pick up a turtle by its tail as you can cause severe injury. The tail is attached to the spine. Toronto Zoo has a fabulous video on this, which I will link in the description. Here's a pic of a common snapping turtle that I rescued and released in Kentucky. Both large organizations and home wildlife rehabilitators are working to rescue snapping turtles. However, sadly, there are not enough turtle rehabilitators in the U.S., Conservation efforts are trying to tackle the declining populations. In 2016, a conservation program at the Nashville Zoo began growing hatchling ag ag alligator, sorry, alligator snapping turtles until three or four years of age. Staff then released the turtles back into the wild. At this age, the turtles are large enough to avoid predation. I hope you will love and respect snapping turtles as much as I do. I have several videos on turtles, 
one of my favorite animals, and we'll link a couple of them below. I am always interested in hearing your thoughts, so leave me a note in the comments. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.